10th generation Honda Civic Type R. It's supposed to represent the pinnacle of front-wheel drive, made with clever engineering and just a touch of magic. So we decided to take a closer look into how this magic is achieved. Let's head to the Car Bible's West Coast HQ, also known as my garage, and tinker with the fabulous engineering of this special hot hatchback. All right, everyone, welcome to the Car Bible's tech segment, Pop Your Hood. I'm Chris Rosales, and we're here with the Civic Type R. On paper, it might seem boring. You know, two liter turbo, front wheel drive, all that garbage, who cares? But I do. We're a little late to the party, but there's still really interesting tech in this car that's gonna carry over into the 11th generation. We're gonna pop the hood, look at the K20C1 engine, and we're gonna look at the front suspension, which is what makes the Type R so special. Before we even pop the hood, the first thing most people notice and make fun of me for when I'm seeing in this car is this hood scoop. You think it would be like a ram air intake or add some cooling, but if we pop the hood, there's this bit of ducting here, and then it just comes out the sides gets deposited into the fender well down here into the fender vents. It's actually shockingly different to a K20 of the years past. The hot side of the engine is now in the front and now the intake is back here. The turbo is right here, the classic do not touch hand. This big old metal pipe here, that's the intake tube, goes in here, it's all cast, goes down in the intercooler over here, back up into another cast pipe that goes into the intake manifold. Why do they choose solid metal instead of just like hoses? It's for response. If you do a hose, the hose can expand under boost pressure. And that's, that, that it takes up response of the engine. It's the air moving and all that stuff. With a solid cast bit, you just kind of ramrod the air into the engine. You ever look under the hood and you see all the manufacturers that make stuff? The Hitachi MAF sensor. Down there, there's a manifold pressure sensor, and that one is Bosch. Very unusual for a Japanese car. But then again, this car is built in Great Britain. See? It's safe. It's good. It's actually 5x120. It's the bolt pattern for Honda Odysseys. Later models, the 2019s and laters, have these two-piece rotors. That lets the rotor expand and contract separately to the rotor hat. It prevents it from warping and all that stuff. It's good for track use. Honda re-engineered this front suspension at what I imagine to be pretty decent cost, and they had to work around the already the limitations of the Civic. This whole thing is super funky and weird, and I love it. And you see a ball joint here, which you don't normally see on a McPherson strut. This is still a strut, but it has an upper ball joint and a lower ball joint. So let me demonstrate with my breaker bar, our uh, steering access demonstrator tool. We have the Civic Type R's tire. We're looking straight on, so we're just imagining bringing this out. On a normal strut suspension car, like say that GTI over there, the top of the suspension functionally is the, the top of the strut tower all the way up here. And the lower ball joint is gonna exist somewhere down here. And you're gonna have a steering axis that looks something like this. What the Civic does, you eliminate that top strut tower and you bring it down with a ball joint. What you can do is bring it in the wheel, bring it all the way in, right? Put that lower ball joint where you want. On that normal strut, you have all this funky axis there's a distance between the center of the tire and the axis. What that's called is scrub radius. And the less scrub radius you have, the better the steering fuel, the better the response, the less the torque steer, the better the everything. Because of this design, they could compact it down into this in-wheel assembly, and they could determine geometry from there. Instead of having to worry about, you know, camber mounts and messing with the body and white of the car, the expensive stuff, they could just get it to the optimal steering geometry. So there's actually three ball joints, two of which do the job of steering the car, one just braces. So we have the upper ball joint, and then we have the lower ball joint right here of the separate hub carrier, and then we have the lower ball joint of the control arm. The geometry of the suspension runs through these two ball joints on the outer. So all the virtual lines and stuff that I was talking about run through here. And this bottom one only acts as a pivot for the suspension. It has an integral link out here in the front that just goes from nowhere to nowhere. But it braces the non-turning part of the knuckle against the control arm. It's a wheel hop reduction link. So what happens is when the axle is twisting, as you're like launching it in a sick drag launch when you're racing your friend Scion TC, this helps it not axle hop so badly. It has a lot of traction and it doesn't freak out off the line. The rear axle of Mustangs have a similar thing because nobody launches Mustangs ever. Okay, so we're up to speed on the front suspension of the Civic Type R and how it makes the car brilliant. But what really matters is how it makes the car feel on the road. There's only one way to find out and that's on my favorite canyon roads. Let's go take a drive. The first thing you feel when you drive it is all of the road texture through your butt, through the steering wheel, and then you rev 
revved that engine out and you feel the four cylinder buzz, all that pop of goodness coming right through your fingertips. Quite a lot of it is the fact that the engine has no balance shafts and it feels old school. The engine loves to rev, which is very unturbocharged of it. It's not bad, but the engine doesn't start really singing until five grand. It does it in an enjoyable way. The throttle is responsive and well-tuned. There is no, no rev hang, no rev hang whatsoever, uh, which means they know how to make that happen. They just decide not to for most of their cars. But this engine feels alive. That's not to say that you're going to be revving the nuts off it like an old Honda because you can still drive it around the mid-range and it's much happier that way you can manage the power much more easily. Let's get to the crux of what makes this car a Type R. It's that front suspension and not just the geometry or the mechanics of it, it's the feel, the ratio of the steering. The way this car responds under braking and acceleration. This is one of the very few front wheel drive cars I've driven that has genuine balance. It, 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 it's ridiculous. The way you can brake into a turn, downshift, rely on the brakes, and then pick the throttle up just at the apex and have the car not just totally wash out. It's astounding. You can ride the rotation instead of fight it like in a rear wheel drive car. And Honda has taken that, harnessed it into the fastest possible package it can be. It's not nervous, which most front wheel drive cars are to be fast. This car is stable, it's poised, but it'll rotate at the brush of a brake pedal. This drives like no other front wheel drive car that has ever been. good news is, it's not the last time we're going to see this front suspension architecture. The next generation Civic is heavily based on this car. So not for nothing, we're going to see this concept improved even more. I just don't want to stop driving this car. I've had this car for a week. I've put a thousand miles on it because I just can't stop wanting to take it for a drive. 